30 competitions. So, um, so suppose we have a tensor that can be written as uh, its low rank If we have a tensor P that goes to some i from 1 to r. WIs are all vectors. Um, the tensor decomposition problem, uh, given this tensor two, we want to find these individual components uh, UI, VI, and WI. So in the previous lecture, you should have seen uh, an algorithm for doing tensor decomposition uh, by uh, image. Uh, so this algorithm, uh, so we know if we have, so given tensor T of this form, uh, suppose these vectors have some nice properties in the sense that uh, uh, if uh, the first set of vectors and the second set of vectors, UI and VI, are uh, uh, linearly independent. By pairwise uh, independent, we just mean the WIs. To, uh, so if we have two different vectors, WI and WJ, they should not be pointing to the same direction. So the angle between them should be uh, not zero and not 180 degrees. Uh, so suppose we have a tensor that has this structure, then there's this algorithm uh, that we can find. Uh, so we can find. UI, VI, and WI uh, up to uh, permutation and scaling. Everyone remember how the algorithm works? Uh, okay, so uh, we'll not uh, talk about the algorithm again in this uh, lecture. Uh, but it's important to keep in mind that we can only hope to find uh, these vectors UI, VI, and WIs up to our permutation and scaling, and uh, there's nothing we can do about that. In the particular applications, we will need to, uh, often the permutation doesn't matter because uh, uh, anyways, uh, the problem itself also has some permutation structure that's the same as the components. Usually we don't care which components we find first, which components we find next. Uh, but often the scaling is something that we need to deal with uh, when we are trying to apply this tensor algorithm to uh, some of the applications. Uh, Okay, so this is the tensor decomposition that we talked about in the last lecture. Um, but there is a problem to this tensor decomposition algorithm in the sense that what we require is this tensor T that is exactly equal to this low rank form. And uh, that could be a problem in uh, practice because uh, in practice this tensor T, as we'll see in uh, future examples, the entries of this tensor T will be often either the probability of some event or the expectation of some random variables. So these things we can uh, estimate the probability or the expectation to uh, any accuracy that we wanted, but it's never going to be exact. So, the, uh, so there's an additional problem that if we do not have this exact tensor, if we have a tensor T prime, 
that's uh, close to T, but uh, it's not exactly the same, do, can we still use the same algorithm? Uh, so that's an issue that's uh, more technical and we will not be, able to be talking about that today. I'm just going to say what can we hope for in that case and uh, for the rest of the lecture we will assume we always get the exact tensor issue. So for that we need something that we call robust tensor decomposition. So robust tensor decomposition is very similar to tensor decomposition, except we are given a uh, uh, hat uh, such that uh, t hat is uh, close to t. Uh, and there are many ways we can define what, how t hat is close to t, but let's not get, get into the detail. Uh, and similarly, we would uh, require uh, the UIs, VIs, and WIs here are not just linearly in independent, but more uh, robustly linearly independent. So instead, we will assume the uh, U is this matrix that uh, whose columns are these vector UIs. then uh, we require the smallest singular value of Q to be uh, something that is, that's larger than zero. And uh, this is also, so uh, is everyone familiar with the uh, singular values or should I? Okay, great. So, um, so once we assume both singular values are bigger than zero and uh, angles between uh, for any i z, the angle between uh, w i and w j is at least uh, is at least something. Um, say uh, then uh, once uh, all these parameters are large enough, uh, we can make sure to, uh, we can find um, approximation version of, uh, we can find ui hat, of i hat, of ui hat. That's uh, close to ui, vi, and wi up to uh, permutation and uh, scanning again. Um, so as I said, uh, this is just something that's possible to do, and there are many ways to do it. Uh, in this lecture, we will not go into the details, and uh, for the rest of the lecture, we will always assume we have uh, the exact tensor of this form. So I have a question. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. So I, I didn't quite understand the difference between these two. Could you point that out a little more? Ah, uh, okay, sure. Yeah, so, so in the left hand side, we have this tensor that's exactly equal to this uh, decomposition. Yeah. Um, in the right hand side, we have a tensor T hat that's not exactly equal to oh, I see. this low rank decomposition. In particular, this T hat may not have any decomposition of this form. Its uh, rank might be large. Okay. But, but t, t, normal t does have that decomposition? Yeah, so normal t does have this decomposition. Okay. On, on that side, though? Uh, yeah, on that. Uh, so this t is exactly equal okay, to Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, so t is also equal to uh, Okay. Yeah, so, so the whole point is even if we don't know this tensor T exactly, as long as we can estimate this tensor T within any uh, arbitrary accuracy that depends on all these uh, smallest singular values and the smallest angle between WI and WJ, 
then uh, we can still hope to find uh, the UIVI and WIs up to uh, any accuracy that we want. Can you use the correlation or theta? Oh, theta is, say, just the angle between the two vectors, oh, okay. WI and WJ. Uh, I mean, normally, you can think of, uh, if you think of WI and WJ are like uh, unit vectors, you can just think of, for example, WI transpose WJ squared is smaller than one. Uh, it's just anything that says uh, these two vectors uh, should not point to the same direction. So when you say any accuracy, you just take care of the feedback or something? Uh, or sorry, what? So when you retrieve u and then w with any accuracy, what do you take and then you feed that to something? Mm -hmm. or? Uh, yeah, so if we have uh, an original vector that's absolute close, then we can find uh, u hat v hat w hat that's uh, uh, a function of epsilon sigma min of u uh, sigma min of v and kappa hat w uh, close v. And uh, this hat of an epsilon goes to zero, this hat so uh, as long as we can estimate the tensor up to any accuracy, in the end we uh, can recover all these vectors up to any accuracy. And uh, in fact, this function will be a polynomial in epsilon at all these parameters. So if these parameters are polynomial, then uh, in the end uh, this function is also polynomial. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, okay, sorry. So this, uh, this kappa w is, uh, or maybe I think I missed the right way. It, it's just uh, try, trying to say that uh, for any pair of wi and wj, the angle should not be zero. Uh, think of it uh, as the smallest angle between the two w vectors. Uh, okay, uh, great. So, um, so uh, in this lecture, we will mostly be talking about uh, applications of uh, these tensor decomposition algorithms in uh, uh, machine learning settings. So, um, so the major problem in applying tensor methods is uh, how do we even get this tensor of this low rank form? Why do we expect? In real, real life, some tensor has this particular form. Uh, so, uh, question uh, why the tensor uh, has a uh, low rank? So, two questions. If the x were closer, uh, with respect to Yes, uh, I, I'm being uh, sloppy here because uh, this is something I believe Anker will be talking about in the next lecture. Uh, I'm just pointing that out. Uh, I mean, epsilon close, you can think of uh, t hat minus t in some norm, either Frobenius norm or spectral norm to be small. So uh, it doesn't matter which norm you use, it just influences what this function you get. Yeah, so, so for this lecture, this is not a major point. Uh, I'm just trying to say there is this problem when you are trying to apply tensor methods to uh, learning settings, uh, but we will not consider this problem in this lecture. Uh, yeah, so, so the problem that we are going to consider is uh, uh, why in real life do I expect uh, something to have the, uh, this tensor, uh, this low rank tensor form? And what do uh, all these constants, ui, vi, and wis, uh, represent? So uh, there's a very general answer to that problem, and that's uh, uh, so a short answer is uh, uh, is uh, you can think of um, what people call a multi zero model. So this is actually not a very reasonable model, but uh, it's a nice abstraction on what, uh, why would you think uh, tensors could 
has this form. So, so it is a probabilistic model, and people often draw these models using these uh, pictures. Um, I'll explain what it means. Um, so when you see this kind of a picture, which you, you would often see in uh, machine learning papers, what this means is I have a probability distribution. Uh, and uh, how are these uh, variables sampled? Um, so uh, because H has no incoming edges, so we, I will first keep uh, H according to some distribution. And then um, what these arrows means, uh, these arrows mean that uh, U is dependent on H, V is also dependent on H, W is also dependent on H. But there's, there are no arrows between uh, U, V, and W. And that means conditioned on the value of H, uh, these three variables are independent. Uh, so I will first keep H, and then uh, next I will keep U according to the conditional distribution of U given H. Uh, we also, V and W also corresponding to the conditional distribution. And in this case, uh, if uh, H is, uh, if H is in one, two, two R. If there are only R possible choices for this uh, variable H, uh, uh, we say the probability of H is equal to I, say is equal to uh, PI. And for uh, after we pick uh, H, um, we say we define ui to be the expectation of u uh, conditioned on uh, h is equal to i. Uh, and similarly, we can also define vi to be the expectation of v conditioned on h is equal to i. And wi is equal to the expectation of w Okay, so, so in this case, uh, once we pick H, uh, UI, VI, WI have uh, different expectations. This is called multi-wheel model often because uh, the motivation for this model is often given as, so suppose you want to tell the difference between uh, different uh, categories. Say, suppose there are three different kinds of uh, apples that you want to uh, distinguish between these two different, uh, these three different kinds of apples, then what you could think about is maybe uh, on the one hand you can measure their weights, on the other hand you might measure their color in some sense, or you can measure some other attributes like uh, maybe how sweet are they. Uh, so hopefully by doing these three measurements, we get uh, three independent observations, uh, U, V, and W. Uh, but of course, this uh, motivation is not as strong because even for apples, you would think these things might be correlated. Uh, so uh, it's best to view this as a uh, useful uh, abstraction. Um, that when, whenever you see some H that's in uh, that has the categorical distribution, and you have three independent parts of the variables that only depend on H uh, and themselves are independent, then in this case, uh, this is the most typical case where we, we can apply this tensor decomposition algorithm. Uh, and why in this case do we get this tensor? Uh, by the way, uh, this H is a hidden variable. So we first pick H, and then we pick U, V, and W. Uh, but we only observe um, U, V, and W. And we will not see what uh, this hidden variable H is. 
So that's the problem in this model, and uh, why do we get this tensor T in this uh, case? So we get this tensor T because if we look at the application of uh, U tensor V tensor W, then uh, by uh, probabilities, we know this is equal to the probability. Uh, if we take the sum over all possibilities for H, uh, that's from 1 to R, the probability of uh, H is equal to I multiplied by the expectation of U tensor V tensor W conditioned on H is equal to I. But for this guy, we know that um, U, V, and W are independent, conditioned on the, this particular value of H. So that means we can rewrite this as uh, sum I of 1 to R. So we can write this expectation into the product of three expectations. Then, since uh, these u, v, and w are independent, conditioned on this particular variable, uh, condition on h having this independent, uh, this particular value i, um, and also because this tensor product is a linear operation, so in that case, I can uh, bring, I can distribute this tensor product uh, into uh, here. And I can uh, just write this expectation as the tensor product of the individual expectations. And just by our definition, this probability is equal to pi. And uh, these individual expectations are equal to the vectors ui, vi, and wi. It was just notation. <laughs> yeah, it was just notation, yes. So, so in this case, uh, we have this tensor decomposition form that uh, looks very similar to that. So in this case, we can hope to run uh, this tensor decomposition algorithm and uh, find out what are the UI, VI, and WIs. And uh, of course, uh, usually if you're scanning issue, again, we, we thought further uh, assumptions on what UI, VI, and WIs are. We don't know how to get rid of the uh, normalization issue. Uh, so this is the most general way of applying uh, this tensor decomposition algorithms to uh, probabilistic models. And, uh, but of course, the models that you want to consider will not just have this very simple form. Uh, so when you try to apply this, uh, there are things that you need to consider. So usually, uh, so, so there are several steps that you uh, need to think about when you want to apply this algorithm to learning some models. So the first problem is you want to identify uh, <coughs> U, V, and W. So in this model, it's very clear there's an H, there are three different observations. But in many cases, uh, it will be not as clear what is this H and what are these three variables. 
to V and W. So in that case, you will need to think about that. Uh, the second step is often easy. So once you identify uh, UV and W, uh, you just estimate the expectation of uh, U tensor V tensor W. Uh, and the third step, you just do tensor decomposition. Uh, and the fourth step, you do some post-processing. Uh, that, in particular, maybe you need to consider the scanning issues and what are these UI, VI, and WIs in the particular model that you are thinking about. Um, so all these steps can have problems, but the step that could have the most problem is uh, uh, often, how do you identify the U, uh, uh, the H, and the U, V, and W? Uh, so, in all the examples you will see, the most difficult part is uh, in this step. Uh, okay, so. Uh, So let's look at an example of this uh, problem. So the first example we see will be uh, topic models. So uh, so everyone knows uh, what topic model is, right? Uh, it's taught in the previous lectures, right? So uh, topic models, just a very brief recap. Uh, in topic models, we uh, have a lot of documents. We want to find what topics are being talked about in these documents. And uh, what are the different topics? Well, we think of, uh, so we think of uh, topics as distributions over words. Topics are uh, distributions over words. And what that means is uh, if I'm talking about this particular topic, what is the probability that I will use a particular word? Um, so in general, we will use a matrix. Uh, so I think of this matrix as A, uh, whose ij concentrate is uh, the probability that uh, uh, I use a uh, word I if the topic is J. Uh, so in tensor matrix, uh, this side is the number of words. So the word, and this side is the number of topics. Uh, and uh, because uh, all these topics are probability distributions, we know every column of this matrix will only have non-negative entries, and they should all sum up to one, right? Uh, so often we will use the vector uh, uh, a j to be the vector uh, is the j column vector. So given these topics, uh, the way we uh, generate a document is for a document, we first choose, uh, so let's look at uh, the simplest case. Uh, which uh, is the case of uh, fewer uh, documents. So in this very simple case, we assume every document can only be talking about one particular topic. So for each document, so uh, the, re the way we uh, generate the documents is for each document, we first choose what is the topic, so 
discussion and is going to talk about. And then uh, we know the distribution of the words that we will use. We will sample a few times from that distribution. And those are the words for this document. So, uh, so I first choose uh, choose document. Uh, sorry, choose topic. Uh, yeah. That's in uh, one, two, R. And then uh, sample uh, say an word from. Okay, so, so in this very simple case, uh, why do we have the structure that's over there? Well, in this very simple case, it's uh, clear why uh, here uh, we have this kind of a structure because um, what we have is uh, this hidden variable h that's equal to the topic, and that's in uh, this, uh, so h is one of the r different topics. And what are the independent uh, observations? Well, we are sampling n words from this distribution, so each word itself can be viewed as a uh, independent observation of this given topic H. Um, so in particular, uh, we have uh, word one, uh, word two, uh, word three. Uh, we can have many more words. But uh, it suffices to just consider the first three words of the document. So, uh, so the next way is if I just ignore all the other words in the document. I just look at the first three words in this document. Then it already has that structure, and uh, I can already hope to do tensor decomposition and uh, learn these parameters. So uh, uh, let's first see uh, how, how to do that. OK, so uh, uh, if we want to get into that setting, then uh, instead of uh, observing these words, we need a vector representation for the words uh, because uh, we want to take the tensor product of uh, these observations, d, v, and w. So uh, in particular, uh, we want to uh, represent these words in vectors so that we can take the tensor product. So the naive way of representing the words into uh, so words into vectors uh, it's just the word number i. Uh, where it's, uh, it's, if it's the uh, word j, then uh, we just represent it by the j's uh, basis vector. So this j, uh, basis vector is uh, just uh, the heat entry is equal to, uh, well, the j's entry is equal to 1. And, uh, the heat entry is equal to zero if t is not equal to j. So we just represent every word as uh, its corresponding basis vector. Then the situation becomes uh, we will have a topic that we don't observe, but that's in one of the R possible topics. Once we chose uh, these, uh, this topic, we will observe the three words. Uh, these are three vectors according to this mapping. Uh, so that's exactly in the same uh, multiview uh, case as we discussed. So we can do the same thing and we can compute the application of uh, u tensor v tensor w. Uh, and just by that formula over there, this is equal to some i from 1 to r, uh, probability of topic i times uh, uh, a tensor a, uh, a i tensor a i. 
us uh, what we need to compute here are the expectation of this variable conditioned on the uh, hidden variable being on. So really uh, what uh, the vector in is what is the probability that uh, given that my topic is I, what is the probability that I be worth J? Uh, so I wrote it as expectation, but this is really a probability. So, so let's say if this is T, then T of I, J, K, I should take up uh, the probability that uh, first really just small notations. If I map word into vector in this form, this is expectation. It increased the uh, R. Uh, since these are zero, one variables, the expectation is really equal to the probability. And this was the probability that uh, the first three observations are equal to i, j, and k. Uh, I have a question about the model, the graphical model. Yes. So I don't know if this is <clears throat> this question applies to this setting. Right. But previously we had that we have a decomposition AW. Yes. How does W enter in the graphical model? Right. Uh, great. Uh, that's a very nice question. So previously, when you talk about topic models, uh, uh, it's uh, that there's. Um, matrix M as the matrix of documents and words, and you want to factorize it at A times W. So it's clear that this A is it's just this matrix A, and that's something to the model because we have the AIs, uh, AJs. Uh, so in this simple case, why does, uh, so how does W uh, come into the play in this uh, simple case? Well, this W matrix in the simple case, it will just be a matrix where uh, every column has a single one. And uh, the position of this one is, uh, is equal to the value of this variable i. So in the more general case, uh, every column here will again be a distribution, which means a document can talk about several different topics. But in our very simple case, this document can only be talking about uh, one topic. So, which means in the probability distribution, all the weights uh, are concentrated in this one particular entry, and that entry is one. So in this case, really, uh, W is a matrix where there's only one entry that's not zero, and that the position of that entry corresponds to this variable i in the graph. Uh, and it's really because we have this uh, very simple model that we have hidden variable to be in this uh, discrete setting. It has only R possible choices. And that's what allowed us to get the tensor form. Um, okay, so. Uh, so if we have this form, then we can apply the tensor decomposition algorithm. Uh, and we will get uh, ui, vi, and wi. So tensor decomposition. Uh, will give us uh, the set of ui, vi, and wi. Uh, let's say we have uh, fixed the permutation issue because we really don't have much ordering in the topics, so the permutation does not matter. Uh, but how do we get the AI and CI from these UI, VI, and WI? Then uh, the operation is uh, these UI, VI, WIs are all scalings of the same vector AI, just by assumption. 
And uh, this AI, we know it has a big scanning in the sense that uh, all the entries of AI should be non-active, and uh, their sum should be equal to one. So we know what is the correct scanning of the AI. And then uh, once we fix that, uh, we can also compute uh, what is this uh, value of PI, because we know uh, PI times uh, AI times AI times AI should be equal to uh, UI times UI times WI. And if UI, VI, WI are all scaling of the same vector, and we know what this vector should be because we know that the sum of all the entries should be equal to one, then we can uh, find the correct value for PI to make this equation to solve. So in the topic modeling case, we said, so this uh, problem of scaling is not a real problem because we can do the normalization just from the model itself. Uh, so is this is this kind of interpretation unique? Is right. This kind of scaling. Yes. Uh, so the uh, the tensor decomposition, as we know, is not unique up to scaling. Uh, I can scale UI, VI, and yeah. WI. But uh, because I know uh, all the AIs should have this big scaling, that they're uh, the sum of the entries should be equal to one. Okay. So my question is, if we don't consider scaling, is that unique? Uh, if we don't consider the scaling, then it is not unique in general. It's unique up to scaling, which means there are equivalent. Yeah, so if we, uh, if we consider, if we think the, uh, if they are up to scaling, then they are the same uh, equation. Yeah, then, then, then it is unique. Then it's Oh, okay. So, so in this tensor decomposition, then these UI, VI, WIs are unique if you don't, uh, if you consider the different scalings to be the the same. Why? Oh, okay. So that's something that should go into the previous lecture. So, uh, so why do we? So the reason why we use this tensor decomposition, the reason why. We need to have uh, these uh, three views instead of uh, what, what happens if we have three independent views is because uh, this tensor decomposition is actually uh, unique up to scaling and specification. Uh, the reason, so you can think of the algorithm as one of the proofs why it is unique. Because if you have two different decompositions, that gives you the same tensor, then your algorithm, your algorithm can only find one of them. But uh, in the last lecture, you've seen that this algorithm always is always correct. So that cannot happen unless you have only one unique factorization. But of course, there are other ways to prove the uniqueness more directly. But um, it's important to know that this decomposition is unique if you consider different permutations and scaling to be the, the same version. Uh, and this, the same decomposition for matrices is not unique. And that is why uh, instead of uh, matrices, or instead of having two independent observations, we need uh, three independent observations. And we need to construct a tensor. Uh, you might think this uh, example by Spearman about uh, there are two different kinds of expansion. Right, so that's an example where if you just consider a matrix, there's no way to identify the correct components. But if you have the tensor, it is possible to do that. So in particular, all the theory, you only have two words that document, and you don't have any additional assumptions, then it is impossible to find the correct components. So you mean rotation? Right, there are rotational uh, invariants in for matrices, but for tensors, there are no such uh, cases. Can you use higher order tensors? Right. So, uh, so the reason he 
here we use the third order tensor is because the third order tensor is the better sample complexity and it's easier to work with. In general, uh, as I said, uh, in the topic model, you should expect many more uh, independent fields. And in general, having more independent variables always helps. Um, it helps in different ways. One reason that this helps is with uh, more words, it's uh, impossible to estimate this probability with a better accuracy. Then if you have a better accuracy, the number of documents you need will be smaller. Uh, another way you can benefit from that is you can make all these views much larger because I can view the first two words as one of the views. Uh, I can group these words into different views and the dimension of the view will become larger. And so, so here I didn't, didn't mention that the reason we can apply a tensor decomposition algorithm is because these vectors AI, they are linearly independent, which is a very reasonable assumption in the topic modeling case because you have, say, 10,000 words here and you have only 100 topics. It's very rare that they will be linearly independent. But in some other cases, in some more complicated cases, maybe the vocabulary, whatever that means, is small, say it's binary. But then you still want 100 topics. They cannot be linearly independent. And in those cases, you would want to group these different operations to get a higher dimension of this. Uh, uh, Can you say again why you use AI for all three of them? Oh, right. Yeah, so, so because all uh, these three words, uh, remember there's a back of words model, so we are not considering the word as uh, the ordering of the words. So all these words are the same, are from the same distribution. Uh, and that distribution is given by uh, this A i. Uh, so all three of them are these A i's. So here, by definition, U, V, and W, they could be the same or they could be different. It's just in the topic modeling case, uh, these three variables are symmetric. Okay, so, uh, uh, yeah. But you mentioned you use Berman logical data and you do the decomposition. Why would you expect the three vectors to get out of both of each other? Uh, <coughs> sorry, what would so suppose you do the this decomposition on its own during data? Yes. Why would you expect in the decomposition to get like the vectors are proportional to each other? Right. So so look at uh, this theorem here. So no matter what UI, VI, and WIs we have, as long as they satisfy these conditions, this algorithm will find UI, VI, WIs up to permutation and scanning. And if the original UI, VI, WIs are symmetric in the sense they are all equal to AI, then the UI, VI, WIs you find will be scannings of AI, AI, AI. So they must be proportional to each other. So it's all because of uh, this uh, unique case of uh, tensor decomposition. So it's because the original problem has this metric structure that they all are equal to that. OK, but uh, so this is a very simple case uh, where we have uh, uh, a single topic for each document, and we don't have any problems uh, in applying this framework. But uh, in real life, um, what people believe is uh, there are different cases. <coughs> so a document can be uh, represented by a mixture of topics. And there's a famous, uh, so it's called the latent verify annotation model. So in this uh, LDA model, uh, documents are, again, mixtures of, documents are mixtures of topics. And the way we do it is we choose uh, a W vector. So W is a vector in 
our dimensions as given by some direct state distribution that's from the alpha of the house to tell you what direct state distribution is. Uh, and then uh, for uh, each word, uh, we first choose uh, choose ti, which is the talking cost of course, uh, like just t, according to this uh, distribution w. So what I mean here is the property t that t is equal to i, and uh, is equal to w. Uh, and then I will choose the word. According to uh, uh, this distribution AT. So, so this is in the same uh, topic plotting uh, A times W sense in uh, in the topic models that we talked about. This W that we chose here will always be a distribution, and that will be a, a column in this W matrix. And once I know the W matrix, the probability of generating a word is uh, given by the product A times W. Uh, right. So the, the same as uh, what you learned before. Uh, so in this case, um, the graphical model is still the same. Uh, we have uh, this hidden topics but in this case, this hidden variable h is in fact a, a vector of dimension r instead of uh, a just a single word. Uh, sorry, a, a just a single topic. But we still observe these uh, independent words. So in that case, uh, if we want to apply the same model, then there will be a problem because uh, the things are, uh, this h is no longer uh, a single topic. Uh, in particular, if we compute this t, that's uh, so t i j k is the probability that uh, first three words are equal to i j k. <coughs> then, uh, because uh, there's not just a one possibility for the topic. This should really be equal to the sum over all the possible different topics, t1, t2, t3, from 1 to r. Uh, the probability of generating uh, t1, t2, t3 uh, and uh, uh, this is multiplied by, given that the first three words have topics t1, t2, t3, what is the probability that these words are equal to i, j, and k. So that's equal to uh, a of uh, i and t1, a of j, t2, a of k, t3. So really, it's the <coughs> more complicated sum. And in tensor notation, we can really write this as t is equal to some i uh, of our sums t1, t2, t3. Uh, from 1 to R. Uh, the probability of T1, T2, T3, which is uh, just W, T1, W, T2, W, T3, uh, A, T1, tensor A, T2, tensor A. So this is not really what we want because now we have the sum over R independent uh, variables. Uh, sorry, R cube terms. And uh, these measures will no longer be linearly independent, so we cannot just simply apply the tensor decomposition algorithm. They are not linearly independent, in particular because they are repetition. Uh, so in this case, uh, also, we can think of it as the uh, uh, there's the core tensor T and uh, the R D. So 
here, uh, I, I e of t1, t2, t3, uh, I mean, it's equal to the expectation of w1, w2, w3. So uh, instead of writing this tensor t as uh, this form, which is the sum of r rep one confidence, in this case, you can write the tensor as the sum over R cube terms. And these R cube terms, um, they are very structured in the sense that there is this central core tensor that has R cube entries, and each entry of the tensor corresponds to one of the components. So this form is usually called a Tucker decomposition for tensor. And unfortunately, a Tucker decomposition for tensor is not unique. It's unlike the, uh, this kind of decomposition, which is often called some other KT decomposition. Uh, so Tucker decomposition is not unique. So if we just have that, we cannot hope to recover these uh, components AI. Uh, so in order to handle this case, the uh, idea is um, uh, to construct a, a tensor uh, T uh, <coughs> such that T minus T zero will have this uh, this form. So, so the, the main problem here is uh, this tensor D here is not a diagonal tensor. It is the expectation of T. And uh, in the previous case, this was a diagonal tensor because uh, WT, uh, if T1, T2, T3 are not all equal, then the product is always equal to zero. Uh, in the previous case, we can think of W as um, chosen according to one of the basis vectors. So if T1, T2, T3 are not all the same, then this expectation is always equal to zero, and the tensor D is a diagonal tensor. But in this case, the tensor D is not diagonal, and our idea would be to try to construct other tensors to make it uh, a diagonal. Um, let me go. Uh, okay, so how do we construct these other tensors? So, uh, so for this first tensor, the way we uh, uh, construct the tensor is we take the document, we look at the first three words, and we estimate the probability that these first three words are equal to i, j, k. Uh, but there are other ways. For example, we can take, uh, take three documents. Uh, look, uh, look at their first three words. Uh, so look at first word of each document. So that also gives us a way to uh, compute a tensor. And that will be a very special tensor because these three words are independent even without conditioning on the choice of the topics, because these are three independent documents. So what is this tensor? This is really equal to, uh, say, by positive tensor U of I, J, K. It's really equal to some mu I times uh, mu J times mu K, where uh, mu I is the expectation of a times W. So, uh, so in particular, this tensor U is equal to mu tensor mu times mu. So this is one of the tensors that we can construct. Uh, so of course, uh, then we can think of other choices. We can take two uh, documents. 
uh, what kind of two words is the first one? And uh, what this pointer is, this won't be uh, a, a B of I J K is equal to uh, the probability of uh, I J in uh, in the first one, and uh, times the probability of K in the second one. And the probability of K will be uh, will be mu K, and the probability of I J will be uh, it's called uh, sigma ij and mu. Uh, so sigma ij will just be uh, so here uh, sigma is just the expectation of uh, a w w transpose. A transpose, which is also a matrix that uh, we've seen before. Uh, so now, of course, in the second case, uh, there are different symmetries because I can say what is the probability that i j is in the first argument. I can also use what is the probability that i k is, are the first two words. So, so rather, we should think of v i j k as uh, sigma i j uh, mu k plus sigma i k mu j plus sigma uh, j k uh, mu i in order to consider all those three possibilities. Uh, in uh, Maths, this is corresponds to if you want to do the tensor product between me, a vector mu and a matrix M, there are three different ways and a symmetric matrix M. Then there are three different ways that you can write the coordinates, and uh, these are really the three different ways that you can write the coordinates. Uh, so we have these uh, three. Uh, tensors, we have the tensor T, we have the tensor U, and we have the tensor V. Um, so the goal is if we uh, uh, well this is sigma. Oh sorry, this is sigma. Right. So, uh, so to, uh, to see what these uh, different uh, tensors are, we will need to know what is uh, this uh, directly distribution that I talked about, and uh, what are its uh, expectations. Because here, uh, so in the tensor T, we will need to discuss what is the expectation of WT1 times WT2. Here we need to consider the expectation of W W transpose. So a directly distribution, so there are many interpretations. One interpretation that you can think about is uh, the following two procedures are the same. So if I choose a word W from uh, from the directly distribution of alpha, and then I pick uh, independent samples from uh, W, from this distribution W. So this is one of the, uh, one way to generate many samples. Uh, this is equivalent to I, I start with uh, <coughs> start with alpha i ball <coughs> uh, color <coughs> and uh, I pick a 
brother in law. And I will. So I will repeat these two steps. I will pick a random ball. I will put the ball back. And uh, add another ball. So the claim is these two are equivalent. The proof is much harder, so I will not do it here. Um, so, so the two procedures are the, the left hand side, I will pick a distribution. Of, so Dirichlet distribution is a distribution of distributions. W is a distribution on R variable, so it's a vector in R dimensions. Dirichlet distribution is a distribution over these r-dimensional vectors. So I will first pick this one distribution from the Dirichlet distribution, and I will repeatedly sample from this distribution. So this is a very simple thing. The right hand side is a process where I start with alpha i ball, think of alpha i's are all equal to one. So I have uh, uh, one ball for each color, each time I pick a ball, and that is the value that I pick here. Uh, so the color of this ball is the value that I sample here. And the next ball, uh, so if it's, say, red, I will put the red ball back into the pool. And I will add another red ball into the pool. So now I will have, instead of R balls, in the next round I have R plus one balls. And uh, in the next round I again pick a random ball. Uh, and if I, in the first round, I picked red, then I will have a slightly higher probability of picking the red again. Uh, so, so it's very tricky why these two are equivalent, because it seems like in this case, the different picks are uh, correlated in the sense that if I have seen more reds, then uh, the probability that the next ball is red is higher. And in this case, it seems like condition RW all these samples are independent. Uh, and they, they could really be the same, be, really because they are all correlated with the same vector W. So, so that's the directly distribution. What is national for for the use of modeling? Or right. Is so, so why do you use a directly distribution for modeling the topic mixtures? The reason is, so there are two reasons. One is if you set the alpha parameters correctly, in particular, you need to set the alpha parameters so that they are not integers. If you set the alpha small enough, then this uh, distribution will give a uh, very spiky distribution W. So in the sense that every document should only be talking about a few topics. And the other justification is the Dirichlet distribution is the so-called conjugate prior of the multinomial distribution. So that itself takes a half an hour to explain. But uh, it, it basically says, if I use this Dirichlet distribution, then if I do uh, some Bayesian operation, if I compute the, prior, uh, the posterior, then it's very easy to compute. I just the posterior itself is also a directly distribution. Uh, so those are all in some textbooks. You can also just see Wikipedia. Uh, so those are the reasons why initially people like uh, directly distributions. It makes the computation much easier. So, so for these uh, directly distributions, we can compute the expectations and uh, I guess uh, because of time, please just uh, believe me that if we compute the tensor T uh, plus two times alpha zero, alpha <laughs> zero is the sum of all alpha i's. And 
this is equal to the diagonal tensor of two alpha x. Uh, So, so once you uh, use this model and you can take the expectations of all these subgroups and uh, somehow magically uh, these tensors can cancel out. And uh, give you a diagonal tensor of the form that we hold. Um, this does look a bit magical and uh, the reason it works in some sense, uh, direction distribution is uh, the least correlated uh, distribution that you can hope for if you allow it. So normally, uh, we would want to pick all the entries of W independently. If we did that, then the tensor will be uh, a diagonal tensor to begin with. But the problem is the entries of W should sum up to 1. So you cannot really pick the entries of W independently. That will, then they will not sum up to 1 with alpha 1. So USA distribution is kind of the distribution that condition on your sum has to be 1. All the other things are independent. So the only dependence comes from the fact that your sum has to be equal to 1. And because of that kind of structure, there's this kind of uh, magical calculation that's going on. And uh, you can find this tensor. And once you find this, this tensor, all the, all the other steps are all the same. You can just apply the tensor to the uh, yes. I wonder if uh, the mean can be distributed to zero. Uh, right. So, so here, we need to know this alpha zero, which uh, uh, is required here. So alpha zero is just some kind of one to r uh, alpha i. So it's the sum of all the alpha i's. Uh, we okay. So the easy way is we assume we know the alpha zero. Uh, if we don't know the alpha zero, we can always enumerate all the possible values of alpha zero up to some accuracy. So does the alpha i do the distribution? Uh, there's no the alpha. Uh, yeah, so, so it's very interesting that in this formula, it only depends on alpha zero. So here it depends on alpha i, but that's something that we can compute using the tensor distribution algorithm. So, so here, the alpha i's and a i's are really unknown. But since we know this tensor, just by the tensor decomposition algorithm, Where scaling becomes a Right. Oh, but the scaling is also fixed because we know the AIs sum up to one. So, so we can compute the alpha. Right. So in the remaining 10 minutes, uh, uh, let me just briefly uh, say how uh, I guess it may not work to. Uh, uh, I guess let's just forget about the community detection part and I'm sure we'll do that in the next lecture. Uh, so, um, so uh, let's just, um, I, in the next 10 minutes, let's check why this could be true. Uh, we can just do that. Okay, so, so what we want to compute are the expectations of, um, so suppose W comes from the directly distribution, 
with parameter alpha, we want to compute what is the location of uh, a single variable, wi, what is the expectation of wi times wj, and what is the expectation of uh, wi, wj, wk. Uh, and all these really depend on, uh, all these can be computed using uh, this procedure, this triplet over here. So uh, the probability of WI is really equal to, in the first peak, what is the probability that I pick a bar of cover I? And in the first round, uh, there are, remember, there are alpha I bonds uh, of cover I in the beginning. So if I pick a random ball, the probability that I pick a ball of color i is really just alpha i over the sum of alpha i. So this is equal to alpha i over alpha zero. Uh, OK, so the second one we want to compute is what is the expectation of wi times wj. So that is really equal to what is the probability that I pick two balls. The first ball I picked is of color i, and the second ball I pick is of color j. Uh, and what is the probability of that? Uh, well, there are two cases. So if i is not equal to j, if i is not equal to j, then in the first peak, the probability that I pick a ball of color i is as we said, alpha i over alpha zero. And then uh, after I pick the first ball, in the second round, what is the probability that I pick a ball of color j? Well, in the second round, there are alpha zero plus one balls because I have one extra ball of color i by the procedure. Uh, so the probability that I pick a ball of color j, which is not equal to i, is to alpha j over alpha zero plus one. So that's the probability, right? But uh, if i is equal to uh, j, what, what is the probability that I pick two balls of the same probability, uh, of the same color? Then uh, because I, in that procedure, I put an extra ball of color i after the first pick, probability becomes much larger it becomes uh, the probability that in the second round I pick a ball of color i becomes alpha i plus one divided by alpha zero plus one. Uh, so really the expectation of wi and wj is equal to that. Uh, and, uh, and finally, this thing, uh, the expectation of wi, wj, wk is equal to uh, um, okay, again, there are different cases. What if i is not equal to j, it's not equal to j, so all the ij cases are distinct. Then uh, again, the probability that I pick the first ball and its color i is alpha i over alpha zero. The probability that I pick the second ball and its color j is equal to alpha j over alpha zero plus one. And the probability that I pick the third ball and it has its color k is alpha k over alpha zero plus two. Uh, similarly, we can compute the case when i is equal to two j but it's not equal to k, uh, and that's alpha i alpha i plus one alpha k uh, alpha zero. And the same is true for uh, i equals k not equal to two j, all those things. And the final thing is if all the three things are equal, then the probability becomes much larger.
So we can compute all these probabilities. And then uh, we can hope to write uh, these tensors uh, T and U and V using the using the expectations of W. So as I said, the tensor T can be written as uh, this upper decomposition form, where the core tensor is this tensor T, and T is equal to the expectation of WT1, WT2, WT3. So, so that we have already computed here. Uh, So using tensor notation, this U can also be written. So U, uh, U is mu tensor mu tensor mu, and mu is equal to expectation of A times W. So really, this is equal to A times expectation of W tensor A times expectation of W tensor A times expectation of W. And uh, it's equal to and um, by definition of this Tucker decomposition, U can also be written as this form, and it turns out to that the core tensor for U is equal to E of W tensor E of W tensor E of W. So. Uh, Um, and uh, when we do this kind of uh, linear operation on T and T theta, really the only thing we need to do is uh, linear operation on this core tensor. Um, so in some sense, the Tucker decomposition is again just a basis change. Uh, instead of uh, using basis uh, E1, so E T1, E T2, E T3, uh, which will be the original basis. We will, in the Tucker decomposition, we are using basis that corresponds to how we state. So in the original, uh, so for simplicity, we can just work in the original basis and uh, look at the core tensor. The core tensor for T is just that third order expectation. The core tensor for U is just the tensor product. It's a red one tensor. It's the tensor product of the expectation. Uh, and the core tensor for V is just the product of the mean, tens mean vector and the covariance matrix. And uh, since we have all these uh, equations, uh, we can check that uh, this formula is indeed correct. So it's all written in that uh, book that Amber has put at the URL. Yeah, so uh, thanks for coming.